Jesus, you got one more hand of praise this morning. Man, come on. Whew. I have no words. We can just walk out of this room and be okay with that, right? You're probably wondering, who is this guy that is just yelling right now in the top of his lungs, right? I'm, I just have a lot to be grateful for. I mean, 2021 was one of those years that I saw God do mighty things in my life. And my name is Brian, and I'm the college pastor here at the church, and you guys may be seated. Um, and it is my honor and my privilege to be delivering a word that is in my heart, and I am so grateful for this place. I'm so grateful for God is using this place to make a difference, not only here locally, but globally. And, um, and I am so grateful for the leadership and having Pastor Brandon and Ms. Gary in my life, not just as pastors, but as mentors, not just that, but as a friend. And I am grateful for his leadership and, and me, and we're so blessed to have him leading this place, carrying the vision. And I, and, and I was in the phone with him earlier, and, and it was just um, earlier this week, and just talking about this message. And I am so grateful that he will give me the opportunity to speak to you. And, it's my honor and it's my privilege. But before we go anything, uh, any, anywhere far, far than that, I'm not from here, okay? So the accent does not come from Alabama, it comes from Peru. Uh, so I'm originally from Peru, that's where I grew up. I, I played soccer there until I met my beautiful bride. And I'll introduce you to my family. That's my beautiful family out there. That's my beautiful wife. I mean, yes, nine years of marriage. We're going on our 10th year, baby, strong. Uh, he, she deserves all the clapping and the cheering because she's put up with me for that long. Uh, and then I have my, 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 my son, Noah. Uh, he's my buddy, my best friend. Uh, he likes soccer. Well, he's forced to like soccer. That's the only sport that I know of. So you judge me if you want to. That's, that's the only thing I can teach. You know, I don't, I don't know anything else. Um, and that's, by the way, where my passion is. I'm passionate everywhere, okay? Uh, even I coach his little soccer team. So if you're like, is he yelling? Is he mad at me? I'm not mad at you. I'm just like, you know. I like to yell, and that's the way I, you know, like I got kicked out of our soccer game the other day, so don't judge me. I know you have too. So anyways, um, and that's my buddy, and then my beautiful princess, Mercy, uh, she is four, and she just gets whatever she wants to, um, just because she's too cute, right? If you, have, uh, if you have small children, just let me know, and, and just tell me how you tell them no. Uh, I, 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 I cannot even think about like the time when it comes and the guy comes knocking on the door, right? Asking her on a day. And I may go to jail and go to prison and then ministry will be over then. But until then, we're going to enjoy pursuing God's calling. Is that good? Ah, there you go. <laughs> Like, I don't know if he's joking. I like it. We're going to have fun today, okay? Um, so today, I know what you came here for, you know, like, we're going to go to church, and you've done the best thing. I mean, you've made it, right? You're starting the year right, and you're like, what are they going to talk about? I know what they're going to talk about, right? Goals, right? Uh, uh, new Year's resolutions, right? New Year, new me, and, and you're not wrong, and we're going to talk about that. But as I was praying for this message, I was like, man, God, what do you want? What do you want to say to, to, to your people? What do you want to say? He was like, let's go deeper than just talking about goals and 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 things that just make us feel good about ourselves. And so today I want to go a little bit farther than just setting goals and all of that because we're living in a world, I don't know if you can notice, we're living in the midst of a world that is very discouraged right now. It's called that the, the fear of the unknown. Don't blame them, right? 2021 and 2020 have been rough years. Who would have thought we were living in the midst of a pandemic, right? There was no, there was no, there was no uh, guidebooks to that. There was nothing. Like, we just had to push through it. And because of that, it is so hard for us to look at the future and be like, I don't know if I want to pursue those goals, those dreams, because I just don't know what's going to happen. So we're living in a society which has been paralyzed by, by discouragement, by fear, and no one seems to notice, and no one seems to even want to talk about that. I've titled my message, Put Down Another Stone, and, and to be honest with you, this was a message that was just an anthem in my life for 2021. At the beginning of the year, I, uh, uh, talking, when Pastor Rain was doing some teachings at the beginning of last year, he said, you know, let's, let's look out for words that will like, um, put us right in, in alignment to what God wants us to do. And more than just, you know, getting in shape and getting all these things, those are good things. Those are not about it all. But let's look into, into things that will put us into the alignment of what Holy Spirit wants us to do. Not to glorify ourselves, but to glorify who God is in our lives. So with, when he said that, I was like, okay, God, 
um, I, I want, we, I ask for two words, right? One for the ministry that I lead and one for my personal life. So for the college ministry was, uh, this was our time. Right, and, and uh, we, we came out and we're like, man, this is our time, we're gonna change the world, and by the grace of God, we have made an impact, and I love what God is doing in our college ministry, so you're a college uh, or a young adult, come check us out, it's awesome. So, so God did his thing in the college ministry, we got all excited, we're gonna change the world, right, it's awesome. And then my personal word was uh, this word called resilience, and I was like, man, uh, I didn't even know what that word meant. Right, I was like, man, resilience. Like, what was this? So for, for a few months go by, and I'm still trying to, to learn about this word and try to, to dive into what this word meant. And, and, about, uh, and I was like, man, God, why did you give me that word? Little did I know. On May 18th of 2021, my, my father, my best friend, uh, went to be with the Lord. By far one of the hardest things, and that's, that's his picture of my hero, my, my encourager. He is the one that that believed in me when no one else did. He's the one that always called before every message. Every, every, every call, he was like, hey, you, you, you can do this. You're called to do this. But dad, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, I don't even know if they understand. No, you, you're exactly where you're supposed to be. He called his grandkids every day. And if you knew me before then, you knew that if there is anything that is going to take me out, if there is anything that is going to discourage me, if there is anything that will take me away from the God-given thing, it was a losing my, my father. And, and, and believe me, when, when that happened, it was one of the hardest, hardest things I've ever experienced, a pain that I cannot describe them. But it is in the midst of all of this that this word resilience popped up. And, and, a, and, a, and a personal event that happened that I want to share with you today, it's, um, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a thing that I hold with, with, with all my heart very dearly. And through, through this metal, this pain, and I am so grateful for a pastor that left everything that that, that he was doing that day. I, I wanna show you a picture. This is a, a pivotal moment in my life where Pastor Brain came into my office the day I found out my father passed. And, and it was one of the most terrifying, just looking on, on my screen, talking to my mom. She just told me what happened and I'm so far away, I cannot be with her right then. And I remember the words my pastor said that day. He said, Brian. I was like, Brian, I don't know, man. I don't know how am I gonna do this. How am I going to encourage people when I'm hurting in the inside? I don't, I don't know how I'm going to. And he said, Brian, you're strong. We're going to get through this. I'm going to be with you every single step of the way. And those are the words that have inspired the message I want to share with you today. And, and, and if you want to open your Bibles, we're going to be in the book of Haggai, okay? I'm going to give you 45 minutes if you brought your Bible to, to, to find it because it's one of those small books. You just don't, like, you don't just... You know, when you're Psalms and you're like, oh, there's Psalms or Proverbs. This is a book that you just don't find it very easily, okay? It's about two pages, but you, you guys don't want to open your Bible. We'll, 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 we'll put it in the screen in a minute. But before we go into, into Haggai, I want to give you a little bit of context, okay? Um, and for us to understand what we're about to read, we have to go all the way back to Solomon, okay? Solomon was King David's son, right? And Pastor Brandon is doing a phenomenal series on the life of David. I'm so blessed by it. And so Solomon, what Solomon does, he builds this beautiful, majestic temple for the people of Israel, right? It was the most beautiful temple you will ever see in your life, okay? And people from all over the world travel to this temple so they can worship God. It was the most beautiful thing you ever do, you will ever see. And when Solomon dies, what happened is the people of Israel turned their hearts away from God. So, 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 so they began to steer and they began to worship other idols. They began to, 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 work, to, to follow their own agendas. And, and, and so God allows a series of events so that, they can, so that he can get his, their hearts turned back to him. So what happened in, in the year of 587 BC, the king Nebuchadnezzar and his army, they destroy the entire, the entire temple. They destroy their communities and the people of Israel go into captivity mourning. Many scholars believe for about 50 years. So for 50 years, right? Now imagine, they've lost their homes. They lost now the temple that they worship and now they go into captivity for about 50 years. After 50 years, they, 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 get, they, they get released and they're like, go back. You can now build your homes. You can now go big, uh, build your, your church, your temple. Now you can go back. And can you imagine the excitement that they must have felt that day? Kind of like you and I right now, right? Like new year, new me, right? Like we're, I mean, I know 2021 was not the year that, but I mean, 2022 is going to be awesome, right? And, and there's this excitement of new beginnings, right? And, and that's, that's what they're feeling like. And they're going and, and they're building the foundation. And then the Samaritans came. And now all of a sudden it's just hard again. So they quit. 
oh man, I said, opposition again? Opposition again, it just got so hard. So they receive opposition, and what do they do? They get discouraged. And it just got difficult. It may not be the right time to build the temple. Oh, does it sound familiar? Right? How many of us have quit right after receiving opposition? Right? You had that dream, that vision, that, I, that idea, and you're like, it got opposition. You're like, oh, it must not be, it must not be the will of God for me to, to pursue that. It must, it's just hard. Do you know what I, I oftentimes find? Is that opposition does not mean that God is against you. But opposition means that you're exactly where you're supposed to be. That you're exactly doing what you're supposed to do. But so many of us, I say like the people of Israel, we've quit when opposition comes. So, so God... So what happens is after 14 years where they focus on, on doing nothing, what, what happens is God sends prophet Haggai to deliver the message and says, the time has come. If you're new to church, what a prophet in those days will do, there will be uh, people uh, assigned by God to deliver his message to the people. Okay, and they were a big deal. So God sends prophet Haggai to says, enough is enough. The time has come to build the temple. Haggai chapter 1 verse 2, this is what he says. He says, this is what the Lord Almighty says. These people say the time has not yet come to rebuild the Lord's house. So, so what, what does that mean? That, what, that, what he's trying, he's being a little sarcastic. I know some of you guys' parents have done this before. I know I've done it. Uh, you know when your kids are acting horrible in, in, in the middle of the store, and then you tell your spouse, it's like, well, your kids are acting horrible, right? And you forget that they're actually your kids too, right? So like, this is kind of like the tone that he's been very sarcastic, how guy is, and he's like, these people say the time has not yet come. Like, bro, like, he, they're your people too, man. Like, what are you talking about? And so Haggai comes and he was like, guys, it is time. The time is now to build the temple. Well, you got to understand that during these 14 years that they've stopped building the temple, what they did, they focused again in their own agenda. They, they built their own homes and their homes became the most beautiful homes ever. So Haggai, this is what Haggai says, look, says, why are you living in such a luxurious house as while my, my, my house lies on ruins? And this is what the Lord of the heavens army says. Look at what's happening to you. You have planted much, but harvest little. You will eat, but you're not satisfied. Look, you have, and you're, you drink, but you're still thirsty. You put on clothes, but you cannot keep warm. Your wages appear as though you were putting them on pockets filled with holes. He's saying, but, but nothing satisfies you. Not, nothing seems to be making sense. Well, why? Because you have focused on things that only Glorify who you are. You focus on your own agenda. With that, with, there's nothing wrong with that, guys. We here can be here and, and sit, sit here and judge. And let's be honest, but many of us have done the exact same thing. Every time that, that a new year comes, it's just all about me, and myself, and I. Well, what, what can I do to make me feel good about myself? Well, and then we're wondering, why do we feel empty? Why do we feel alone? See, God is not against us having stuff. That's not what I'm trying to say. God was not against them having homes. God is not against you working hard so you can have financial stability. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm not talking about that God is against you having stuff, but it's when stuff have you that the problem rises. My friend, nothing will ever satisfy you until you step into the God-given assignment, into the God-given purpose that he has put inside of you even before the creation of the world. Some of you guys are, oh, I don't know if that's true, Brian. If there's air in your lungs, there's still purpose inside of you. I don't care how young you are. I don't care how old you are. Because before you were your parents' idea, you were God's idea. And if you're still breathing, you still have an assignment inside of you. So today, I want to remind you there's no coincidence that there's, there is air in your lungs. It is no coincidence you have overcome the things that you overcome in 2021 in 2020, 2019. There's no coincidence. You were born for such a time as this. So I wanna ask you a question that will lay the foundation of my message today. What does God want you to finish in 2022? Is there an unfinished assignment in your life that because of uh, opposition, but because of discouragement, you just stopped? Notice that he didn't say, what does God want you to start? Would you agree with me that starting something is much easier than finishing something? 
Because so many of us, after a position has risen, we just stop doing what God called us to do. After that hurt that we experienced, we stop, we just got discouraged, and we find ourselves just like the people of Israel this morning. I don't know what that is, but, but let me be a Haggai in your life this morning and tell you, well, the time has come, church. 2022 is here, and it is time for us to step into 2022, not pursuing things that glorify us, but pursuing things that glorify God through us. Because there is a world out there that is hurting, that it is looking for people that are passionate to pursue the dreams God has put inside of you. So I'm going to tell you what Haggai told the people. The time has come. The business idea that you had that you just stopped pursuing because they got hard. Maybe it's journalism. Maybe, maybe it's missions and going up and not just into the world, but into your community, into your neighborhood and preaching the gospel. I don't know. Maybe there's a book inside of you that you have just been putting aside because you're, not, you're scared of, of writing. But there's book that, a book that has put inside of you that you need to release into the world that will be a blessing for many. Maybe starting that nonprofit that is going to help your community. I don't know what that is. Maybe it's just serving a church. Maybe start sharing your faith at work. Maybe it's giving. Maybe it's forgiving those people that have hurt you because it's not affecting anybody but you. Maybe it's being disciplined in your spiritual life. So here's what God tells them, right? The time is now, but God does not just tell them that. God gives them some instructions, right? And he tells them, look what Haggai chapter 1 verse 8. He says, what I want you to do, I want you to go up into the mountains Bring down the timber and build my house. There it is. Step one, hey, uh, the time is now, people of Israel. Go up to the mountains, bring down the timber, build my house so that I may take pleasure in it and be honored, says the Lord. Right, step one, two, three, they have it. The moment I said there is an unfinished assignment, you know exactly what you need to do. But why don't we do it? Oh, because we want step four, five, six. I don't, God, really though? I, step one, like two, three. I don't know if I can do that. You got to show me four, five, six. Like you got to show me how these things end, how these things unravel. I don't know if I can do this first. Well, in order for God to reveal what four, five, six wants you to do, you got to do one, two, three. But so many of us are paralyzed because we don't know. Remember when God called Abraham? What did he say? Go and I'll show you. He didn't say, I'll show you, then you go. See, if, if we're faithful to God and if we're obedient to God with step one, two, three, He'll be faithful with step four, five, six. But you've got to make some moves. You've got to go up to the mountain. You've got to go bring down the timber. And you've got to build the house. I love what Pastor Bill says. He says, if you do what you can with what you have, where you are, God will not leave you where you are, and he will increase what you have. If we're just faithful with step one, two, three, God will be faithful with step four, five, six. So, 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 so there you go, right? And Haggai chapter 1 verse 13 says this, Then Haggai, the Lord's messenger, gave this message of, for the Lord to the people. I am with you, declares the Lord. So the Lord stirred up the spirit of Zerubbabel, son of Sheltiel, governor of Judah, and the spirit of Joshua, son of Josedad, the high priest, and the spirit of the whole remnant of the people. And they came and began to work on the house of the Lord Almighty, their God, on the 24th day of the sixth month. Now they got it, right? We're building the house. You got us, Haggai. Let's do this, right? We're going to do this. It's going to be awesome. It's going to be incredible. We can do this, right? So a month goes by, and they quit again. And what? So they had this, this religious festival around the temple, and they're like, they're looking at their temple, and they're like, this is pathetic. We've made no progress. And then what they happened, they began to compare their temple to the way that Solomon's temple looked like. If you're discouraged today, it's because of these two reasons. Number one, comparisons. Number two, the lack of progress. There's two reasons why you're in. Look, look, what, look what Haggai chapter 2 verse 13 says this. So 2, 3 says this. Who of you is, is left who saw this house in its former glories? How does it look like to you? Does it not seem like, you, like nothing? In other words, who is old enough to remember what the temple looked like? Who is old enough? And some scholars believe that at this moment, Haggai was about 75 years old. And, but, but during Solomon's temple, he was a teenager. So he knew what the temple looked like. He remembered. And what happened, they're like, our temple doesn't look anything like the Solomon's temple. God, dog, we, we, we tried to do it, God. We went through captivity, through trials. And I mean, this is pathetic. What do we do? They're so discouraged once again. 
They were comparing, and, and we can sit here and judge them. I, I cannot believe they stopped where, where. But how many of us have stopped exactly doing what, what they're doing? Number one, comparisons, right? You're comparing yourself with other people, of course. Right? If you're a man, you're comparing. Like, oh, my goodness, why do they have the F-150 pickup truck and I can barely start my Prius? Or like, or I like oh, man, on vacation again, Hawaii, Four Seasons. I can barely go to Ellerslie, Georgia. Like, I, you know what I'm saying? Like, you're like, oh, my vacation like I can barely go grocery shopping and you're so discouraged so many of you little girls right or like or teenager girls you're like their Instagram looks so much better than my Instagram mom or like oh look at their social media they got invited again how did they get invited and you're all of a sudden you're just like the people of Israel discouraged have you ever thought that you might be comparing your beginnings with somebody else's finish this is what they were doing. They were comparing the beginning of the temple that they were building to somebody else's temple that was already finished. And we do exactly the same. Some of you guys are like, oh, man, my business is not where it needs to be, right? And you're comparing your beginnings with somebody else's ending. I love what John Maxwell says. He says, people want to do what I do, right? They want to have the, the, the influence that I want to have. They want to have the things that I have. But they don't want to do what I did. We're comparing, comparing, but we're not willing to pay the price of the process. We're good with the results. We're good with the ending. We're good with the, 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 the end of results, but we're not willing to pay the process price that many people are where you want to be have paid. And number two, the lack of progress, right? Number one is comparing. Number two is the lack of progress. Some of you guys, business owners, right? Like you, you're, you're trying to get your business moving. You're taking one steps, one, two, three, but they don't feel that you're moving forward, but they feel that you're going backwards. You, you feel like, oh, some of you guys, you're, I'm going on a diet, right? 2022, all you're going to eat is kales and beans, right? And you're going to be like, oh, this is it, right? Some of you guys are preparing your wife and you're like, sweetheart, you're about to see a six pack you've never seen in your life, right? Like all of us find ourselves in that, in that place, right? Oh, but, but there's no progress, right? You're on your way to max fitness, right? And you're passing that beautiful waffle house, right? That beautiful Cracker Barrel, that beautiful Burger King. I know I've done it. I just laid my, I left my phone at max fitness because my wife has my locations and I went to she's here I'm not going to look at it right now I'm sorry right so so there is no progress what do we do we get discouraged we're exactly where 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 the people of Israel are in this moment so 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 for the reminder of our time together what is what does God do what is how how, how, how what is God going to do to prophet Haggai that is going to make the people of Israel step into the God-given calling that they had so for the reminder of our time we're going to look into that and and high, look what Haggai chapter 2, verse 4, what God, God is going to do is he's going to first talk to the, people, to the leaders, right? And this is what he says. He says, but now be strong, Zerubbabel, declares the Lord. Be strong, Joshua, son of Josedach, the high priest. Be strong, all you people of the land, declares the Lord. And what? Work. God says, be strong and work. Come on, all together. Be strong and so how do, they're discouraged, they don't know why God is pathetic, and God comes and says, you've got to be strong, and you've got to do the work, for I am with you. Be strong and work. Notice, this message is super simple, right? He's like, is that it? Like, is that what I need? Yeah, yeah. But I'm afraid that in its simplicity, guys, that we can miss the message, what God is trying to communicate to you today. Be strong and work. Notice he doesn't say, hey, I want you to talk the talk. He didn't say, I want you to sit in your couch and just dream the dream. No, no, God says, I want you to be strong and I want you to work for I am with you. Basically, what he's saying is like, go up to the mountain, bring down the timber. I know this is nothing like a timber, but this is, this is the best, best I can do. And put down another stone. Be strong. Do the work. Put down another stone. I know, God, this is not making much difference. Look at their thing. No, 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 you'll be strong. Do the work. Put down another stone. 
But God, huh, I don't they have a bigger fortress, they have bigger homes, oh no, be strong and do the work. There's no progress, God. Be strong and do the work. Oh God, I don't know, I just lost a family member. How am I gonna stay on the stage and encourage others even when I'm hurting in the inside, when I don't feel, no, no, Brian, Brian, be strong and do the work. I am with you. Be strong, put down another stone. God, but, but, but my business is not where I'm supposed to be. No, no, be strong and do the work. For I am with you. My family, I don't know, God, my kids might not be strong. Do the work. Oh, God, I don't know if I can forgive them. No, be strong. It's not hurting anybody but you. Oh, God, I don't know if I can be disciplined. No, be strong. Do the work. Craig Rochelle says this, successful people do consistently what others do occasionally. When you feel like you're giving up, be strong and do the work. Keep praying for your family. I know some of you guys have been praying for your kids or your grandkids, and, and it seems like it's not making any progress. No, no, you, you show up, you be strong, do the work, put down another stone, you keep on praying for them. It, no, it doesn't seem like you're making much progress. Be strong. I, I know you feel you're separated from God. Open the Bible every morning. Be strong. Do the work. Seek him daily. Be disciplined. Do, okay, do, do consistently what other people do occasionally. 2022. I'm not going to pursue something. I'm going to be strong. Do the work. I'm going to finish what he started. Be strong and continue to exercise even when you don't feel like you're making any progress. That's me, by the way, yeah? Oh God, I don't know if I can stop looking at those images on my computer, God. That sin that has been holding me back. That I don't know, no, no, be strong and do the work. Every time that you look at the mirror and you don't like what you see, you be strong, do the work. For I am with you because you have created at the image of God and God loves you exactly where you are, how you are. I don't care what you look like. I don't care if you like God loves you and he is for you. I don't know what, who that is that for. But know that today. Be strong and continue to love others. But oh God, you're telling me that I need to love my boss? Yes, you be strong, do the work, put down another stone. Honor when people, even when people are not the most honorable. You keep showing up at church, serve at church, do the best you can. You be strong, put down another stone. I don't feel like it. God, I don't feel like doing it. No, God says be strong and do the work. I do care about your feelings, son, my daughter, but you gotta pass beyond what you feel. I know it may not seem like it. Be strong, put down another stone. You're comparing yourself. There's no progress. God says be strong. One day you're gonna wake up and realize that every stone you've put was not a stone that was going to waste. That every stone had a purpose behind it. That every stone had a meaning behind it. One day you're gonna look up and you're gonna be, thank you God. One day you're gonna wake up and you're gonna say, oh my goodness, I cannot believe that's what you were doing. One day you're gonna look back at your life and you're gonna be grateful for every stone you lay down. One day, you know what I say, look what Galatians chapter 6 verse 9 says. So let's, not, so let's not get tired of doing what it is good. At just at the right time. It doesn't say not at your time. It says at the right time, you will reap a harvest of blessings if we do not give up. Just go. Be strong. Do the work. Put down another stone. And here's my first closing. I have seven of them, Okay. Why? Why am I going to be strong and do the work? Why? Well, look, look what, what the verse says. Be strong, Joshua, son of Jehoshaphat, the high priest. Be strong, all you people, the land. There's the Lord in work. For I am with you, declares the Lord Almighty. The greatest news of all times, church, is that we do not have to do it alone. He, 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 we, the, 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 the secret of all of this is you don't have to be strong in your own power. Because of Jesus, the New Testament teaches us that when we are weak, he's strong. That when you don't feel like it, when you, even you, don't, you don't think like you can do it, then that you are a perfect candidate, my friend. 
that God's strength is made perfect through your weakness. I'm a living testimony of that. There's no way I could have done it, 2021, without God. That in the middle of my incapability, that in the middle of my, the uncertainty of the future, in the middle of the hurt, in the middle of the pain, in the middle of we not feeling like grabbing a mic and telling how much God loves them, God came and says, be strong, Brian, do the work, for I am with you. There is no way on earth I could have done it without him. Well, all of this is so that he can get the glory, not me. Your life, your business, it is not so that you can get the glory, church. But it is so that God can get the glory through. All you got to do is like this. I just got to put on another show. I just got to be strong. If you have accepted the free gift of salvation, the spirit of God lives inside of you. So when you feel like you're giving up, you're just a perfect candidate for God's strength to be strong through you. So Haggai chapter 2 verse 6 and 9 says this. This is what the Lord Almighty says. In a little while, I will once more shake the heavens and the earth, the sea and the dry land, and I will shake all nations, and what it is desired by all nations will come. And I will fill this house with glory, says the Lord Almighty. The silver is mine, and the gold is mine, declares the Lord Almighty. The glory of the present house will be greater than the glory of the former house, says the Lord Almighty. And in this place... I will grant a peace, declares the Lord. Basically what God is saying, hey guys, I know it doesn't seem like much. I know, I know, but through this place, I'm gonna impact many generations to come. I know it doesn't seem but just some stones in the ground, but get ready. They didn't know that what they were doing They were actually foreshadowing the coming and foreshadowing the greatest news of all time, the coming of the Messiah. They had no idea. All they can see with with their eyes is like, this is nothing. God saying, it is something. And we just get to see it, right? We just get to see it from, not for them, though, at the time. This changes everything. Now, friends, you don't have to be strong and just do the work on your own, or just put down another stone because, you know, that's, that's, what, that's what they told me, I to put down another stone. No, you do it because he is in you. Not only he is in you, he is with you. And not only he is with you, but he is for you. I don't have to do and put another stone for, to get the approval of God. No, I gotta put another stone from the approval of God. Man. I believe 2022 is gonna be the greatest year yet, but the only thing that will make sense to every pain, every valley that you go to is when you realize that you're not just putting stones to put stones down, that you're actually putting stones because God is gonna move forth a message through you to a people of the world that is out there that is screaming for help. That is saying, there's got to be something else. And it's not just up to Pastor Brian. It's not just up to here. It is up to every single one of us for us to realize that it is time. Enough is enough. God died for more than just me living and passing through life. That God died for me so that I can make a difference in a world that it is hurting. We have the answer, church. Jesus. Nothing else. Maybe... Maybe it is time to set goals to build this temple because my friend, whenever you accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you became the temple of the Holy Spirit. Every time you put another stone, it is, it is his name that is being glorified. When you serve somebody, he gets the glory. When you love somebody, he gets the glory. When you honor somebody, he gets the glory. When you show up, even when you don't feel like showing up, he gets the glory. This is what we can, we can look at to 2022, friends, and we can say, man, this is going to be my year. Not because of the things that you've done, not the things you're going to do, but the, the things God is going to do through you. 
that is why you're sitting here. That's why you're watching online. It is because God wanted you to hear this message for you to, to, to don't allow discouragement and the things of the world paralyze who you are. There is still purpose within you. And listen, listen, some of you guys, you're a family member and some of you guys are fathers, okay? I'm gonna talk to the fathers for a second. I am grateful for a father that lays some stones down for me because I am sitting down on the shoulder of a giant that, that laid every single stone up for his family. That every time that I saw him go to work, he was just pursuing God with everything that he's got. And every stone that I put down, I know that my father lays some stones beneath him. And I know some of that grandmother that was a praying grandmother that prayed for a grandchild like me. Don't give up, church. Keep putting down stones after stone. I know it may not seem like much, but it is. I'm a living testimony that every stone that my, my family has put down, I'm just resting in them. Stone after stone, he is with you. He is for you. You don't have to go to a certain place trying to find God. He came to you. He sent his only son for us to be able to just show up and say, you know what? I'm gonna be strong and do the work because he is in me. He is in me. He is in me. Philippians 1, 6 says this, and I am certain that God who began the good work within you will continue his work until it's finally finished in the day when Christ Jesus returns. And because you're the temple of the Holy Spirit, remember when Jesus says, upon this rock, I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail. Are you thankful for that church this morning? I know I am. Upon this rock, I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail. We are the people of God. And upon this church, he will build and the gates of hell, no matter what comes, no matter what the waves throw up in 2022, you're gonna be like, I'm gonna be strong. Do the work for he is with me and i remind you of galatians chapter 6 this is my last closing okay i had seven of them i told you earlier so let's not get tired of doing what it is good because at the right time you will reap a harvest of blessings if you do not give up don't give up church finish what he started he'll be faithful enough to be with you through it all so as we enter 2022 whatever goal you have Whatever vision you have, you got to be strong. Do the work. Be strong. Do the work. Put down another stone. And know and believe with everything in you that he is in you. And because of that, we can say, the best is yet to come. Let's pray. God, we are grateful for a father like you. Thank you for this world, to, all, to the word, that this word that for all of us, God, that are discouraged for all of us that have stopped dreaming, that have stopped pursuing the God-given purpose inside of us, God. And I'm grateful for a word that it is challenging yet so encouraging. Today, here's a group of people that are so passionate, God, of doing what you've called us to do. God, I pray that you will give them strength. Whoever is watching online, whoever it is here that thought about giving up, God, I pray that you will bring strength through your Holy Spirit, a strength that you can only give, an encouragement, God, and they will step into 2022, no matter how old they are, no matter how young they are, God, they will step in confidence that he who began the good work in them will be faithful enough to complete it until Jesus Christ returns. God, hear his people, and we say we are available, Lord. We're available. We're trying to pursue in our own stuff, our own things. God, we want to align ourselves to your Holy Spirit. And we say, here we are, God, whatever you want to do. And if you're here for the first time or you've been coming here for a while, you're watching online, I'm going to speak to you for a second. You feel like the people of Israel at that time. They were doing stuff and nothing satisfied them. They were filling their pockets with stuff and nothing seemed to be enough. Every time you lay your head down in the pillow, you're asking the question, is there anything in the world that will bring fulfillment to my heart? You feel empty. You've tried about everything. 
relationships, drugs, everything you've tried, but nothing seems to fill that gap in your heart. My friend, perhaps it's that you don't have a relationship with the one who created you. Perhaps it is the thing that you've been pulling away from God and God today is telling you and giving you the free invitation to say, hey, I am calling you, come. I wanna have a relationship with you. I came down to earth, I came to you. Not just that, I died for you. Not just that, I rose again for you. The first stone for you, my friend, is what I call the stone of salvation. And this is the most important stone you will ever put in your life. And if this is you and God, you're saying, I've never given my life to the Lord. I've, pursued, I've been pursuing my own things, nothing satisfied, nothing fulfills me. I'll tell you what, what John says. John says, for I so love the world that I gave my only son for whoever believes in me shall not perish but have everlasting life. You wanna give reason, you may not avoid pain, but God gives reason to your pain. And if that's you, if you wanna lay the first stone in your life for your family, for generations to come, if that's you, just say this prayer after me. Just said, God, I am sorry. I know there's nothing magical about this prayer, but it is through you and only you. God, I ask you to please forgive me of my sins. I know that you're a holy God and I'm a sinful person and this separates us. But today I acknowledge the bridge between you and I and his name is Jesus. I believe that you came and not only that I believe that Jesus died for me and not only that I believe that he rose again for me I ask you that you will write my name in the book of life and I promise I will never be ashamed of you I love you thank you for loving me back because even I'm most more sinful you are still most, most merciful today I acknowledge that heaven is my home. And that everything that's gone through, there's purpose behind it. I love you. I am yours. You are mine. Amen. Thank you so much for joining us today. If this ministry or this message has touched your life in any way, please send us your story to I am at CascadeHills.com. Now, if you'd like to financially support this ministry as it continues to spread the word of Jesus Christ around the globe, you can go to our website, CascadeHills.com, or download our free mobile app and click on the Give button. We invite you to check out some of our other messages or tune in live every weekend, Saturdays at 4 or 6 p.m. or Sunday mornings at 9 and 11 a.m. Thank you so much for joining us. Have a great day.